been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Cross the UP Fair, man. I breathe that freezing air. Hi, this is Jim Islib with MSU Extension, and this is what's up at UPREC on October 19th, 2020. Today is soil testing day here at Chatham, and we're visiting with Paul Nas, farm manager, as he collects some soil tests. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul Nas, and today we're going to talk about soil sampling and what we do here at the, at the farm for soil testing. We try to take a soil test every three years so we can keep track and monitor how progress is going. I guess we go and do all our fields at the same time every three years. Some people like to do a third of them and rotate it. But the way we soil sample here is we use a probe and this is a, a stainless steel probe with a, a tip. It's got a replaceable tip. So when we go out to soil sam sample we just grab our probe and then we come with a bucket and a screwdriver and the screwdriver is to push the soil out of the probe after we take it. Uh, we do almost everything here no-till and so the recommendation is for soil testing is that you soil test to the depth of your tillage and since we don't till we generally take a soil test at about three inches. But when we come out to sample we start in the field and uh, we find a spot that's kind of free of debris. That's about three inches. So you have that nice soil core inside your probe. And when we get that done, we put her in a bucket. Clean out the probe for the next one. So then what we do is when we're soil testing, is we just zigzag across the field. We want to get at least 20 core samples from uh, each field. And we try not to sample a field over 20 acres. If the field is over 20 acres, then we'll, we'll do two samples, or however many samples we need to in that field. We also try to take a look at the uh, contour of the land and the soil types. This particular field is pretty even and, and uh, similar across the whole field, so we'll just do one soil test on this field. If you have some fields where there may be a ridge and it drops down into another flat area in the field, you may want to consider sampling those that top side of the field and the bottom side of the field separately. Okay, so we've driven around the field, zigzagged across the field to try and get as good a representative sample as we could of the field. So we have our soil samples all in this bucket, and you can see they're kind of in core still. So what we'd like to do, what we need to do is we need to just reach in there, stir that up as best we can, bust up as many of those cores so that uh, when we take our sample, it's going to be representative of the field. So it takes a little bit of time an effort to get all that stuff kind of loosened up, get those clods busted up. You know, we want to mix it as good as we can because, you know, we're going to take about a cup of soil out of here. So if you have one particular clod that didn't get busted up and that gets in your sample, you may have uh, a lot more area of that field that represented in the sample than other areas. So if there's any big debris in there, you'd want to take that out, any stones, anything like that. So once we get it all stirred up and mixed up, we got a good sample, then we want to take about a cup. We just put it in a Ziploc bag, and then we'll label that bag, and this is what we'll submit to the lab.
if a soil testing probe like this isn't available, you can still get a good soil test sample using a, a spade, a shovel, uh, or even a trowel. I have here a typical spade. And what you want to do is dig a neat vertical sided hole and then take a slice off the edge of that hole to the depth of tillage or in the case of an untilled field three maybe four inches deep and uh, collect several subsamples the same way you would with a probe zigzagging around the field collecting a representative sample of soil. We'll make a nice neat hole approximately eight inches deep assuming that we'll be tilling this field to that depth. Now we want to take a slice off the vertical side of this hole, maybe an inch thick or less. And here we have a, a slab of soil that represents the profile of that hole. And we're going to we're going to collect just a part of that because we uh, want to take several samples like this, collect them in our clean plastic bucket, and create a representative soil sample. So here's one subsample using a spade. important thing is to make sure that this sample represents a similar profile in the soil depth every time you take one and to take enough subsamples so that you get a good representative sample of the field. Of course it takes more time to collect a good soil sample with a spade or a shovel than it does with a soil sampling tool. But keep in mind that the quality of sample that you collect and submit to the lab will make a difference. And it's to your advantage to take the time needed to collect a good representative soil sample. For more details on soil testing through Michigan State University, visit the MSU Soil and Plant Nutrient Laboratory website. Simply Google MSU Soil Lab to get there. You'll find details on sample collection, fees, shipping, and interpreting soil analysis reports. In addition to MSU, there are several other good reputable soil testing labs available. That's what's up at Uprec. Hope to see you again next time. I'm in the Fayette Fairport, Faith Horn, Iron Mountain, Flat Rock, Tree to Ishpeming, Tri Mountain, Con